All right, so the Simple Spoils engine is everywhere. Literally everywhere. So why don't we talk about decks that are budget and that you can pick up for much less than what that engine is actually going to cost you. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like as well as share your thoughts about which decks you feel like are budget and also strong in this meta so people that are on a budget can pick those up. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. For the first deck, we're going to be talking about one of the arguably best decks of the format, which is Unchained. Now, we're not quite decided whether or not Rescue Ace is the best, Unchained is the best, but they are definitely up there. The deck is really strong and it is budget friendly. We might get a little thrown off because Abomination's Prison is around, let's check the price trend. It's around 27 euros for one card, but you need to keep in mind that this is like three copies of this card and then you only need to add a couple more things because the rest is actually very cheap and the best part about that is the fact that you maybe have stuff lying around i literally took took some time quite a lot of time because i have like piles of bulk and i dug out an entire unchained core now granted i don't have unchained solar rage because i don't and i don't have prison so if you're in the same boat as me, you only need to pick up Prison as well as Unchained Solar Rage. Now let's check out how much this card costs. It's around 11 to 12 euros. I know it hasn't received a reprint ever since the 2020 tin reprint, but still, I feel like this should have maybe been a disclaimer at the beginning of the video. In my opinion, if a deck is around a hundred dollars, euros, whatever, or less than 150, I consider it budget because you're spending that amount of money to play a competitively viable deck. And if you compare it to some other decks that cost like 300, 400 euros, sometimes even 500 euros, or just simply an engine like the Simple Spoils is around 270, 280 or something like that for just the engine. So anything below 150, I will consider budget. And we also need to keep in mind that a lot of times the core is very cheap and then some extra deck cards are actually kind of staples, you know, stuff that you may already have on hand because they are good in a lot of decks. So with all of that being said, I do think Unchained is budget and it is also so good. It is consistently topping and speaking of consistency, it has a lot of consistency. It is really good at doing what it does and uh, it's just such a strong mid-range contender, so much space for non-engine that again, if you're on a budget, you can just decide which kind of non-engine you want to play. And there was a rarity collection that reprinted a bunch of really, really strong cards in low rarities. So that's really nice. And uh, I guess there's also the Unchained Soul uh, Lord of Yama, which is like six, seven euros and you need two copies of that. And um, I get that SP is very much needed in the meta, but we had this discussion in my last budget decks video that I did. SP is expensive, but you need to prioritize. You need to decide like what events am I, am I going to? And if you cannot justify getting the card, don't get it. That's just as simple as it is. And um, that's pretty much going to be it. Moving on to the next deck. I had to put Fire Kings in here. This might be a little, I don't know, quick to, to say, okay, Fire Kings are going to be this meta deck because we are talking about meta decks, but I wanted to talk about it because like the structure decks are coming out in a couple of days and I do think they are the best structure decks of 2023. And what I really love about them is the fact that if you're on a budget, you can play it and you can play it with budget engines, which we're going to talk about, but you can also add to it. So if you already have Sinful Spoils because of whatever reason, you played it in Rescue Ace, Inferno, Bomikanko, whatever, you can play it in this deck as well. If you don't have Sinful Spoils, you can wait for the support, which is Bonfire, as well as uh, in Phantom Nightmare, you're also getting some other Snake Eye cards and stuff like that. So then maybe you can justify getting Sinful Spoils later if you don't feel like picking it up right now. And also, again, it's going to matter which events you actually go to. And if you still don't feel like picking up Simple Spoils, it is still a mid-range contender, which you can play with the new um, card from, from Phantom Nightmare, the Promethean Princess, which if you only get that, you have a strong link which revives a fire, so you don't necessarily need Simple Spoils. Basically, they are there for consistency, and you need to decide if it's worth it for you. 
but I did want to include this deck because I saw this um, deck list, which you have on the screen, which is just Dokmadika um, Fire King. And it's kind of nice because Nadir Servant into Maximus is a one card combo to get to Fire Kings. And Fire Kings by themselves, like I called them in the last video, I've seen people call them and I think it's very on point. It's just Pyro Unchained, pretty much. Fire Unchained. And um, yeah, I don't know. I wanted to include this deck. I know it's meta decks and this deck hasn't really proved itself. But judging by the OCG, I do think this is going to be quite a nice deck moving forward. Specifically post the support, but... You can get structured decks right now and you're going to spend about 30 euros for them. So I think that's really nice. How the deck actually works is obviously with some extra deck cards because you need your Shureig, which gets sent to the graveyard and um, you get to search a winged beast, beast or beast warrior, which uh, whose level has to be equal or less than the number of your winged beast, beast or beast warriors that are banished. And in the combo, you're going to also dump Garura banish the Garura and then this Garura is going to be like the winged beast that you want so you can get to your Fire King uh, Ponyx which is really cool. But why I'm saying all of this is because Garura is actually like one of the most expensive cards in your deck and it's like seven euros now that I'm looking at it because everything else is in the structure deck and Tri Brigade stuff has always been quite cheap like very very cheap actually. So yeah that's what I wanted to say Garura is your money card of the deck so yeah I think this deck is really nice. Moving on to another money card in an archetype and um i don't know you might agree disagree whatever i think tier is still budget i think tier is cheap actually it's like yes it's annoying to have to buy pedlerino if you don't own it from before because you know it was like 10 to 15 euros when the deck was not good and now it's twice the price i totally understand that but you need to pick up pedlerino get your tier limits kashtira and then your extra deck stuff, but that's it. Like, you are playing such a powerful deck whose core is actually really, really cheap if you exclude Perleraino. And again, you're going to find yourself spending about 100 to 150 euros, and it's also going to depend on how many cards you had from before. Now, I did not pull up Diviner of the Herald over here, but it's like around 10 euros or something like that, and you would usually play one copy. And the rest is just extra deck stuff that I call staples, you know, stuff like Dark and Sprint, Baron, which got a reprint. So you have cards that are, you know, strong or nice in other decks as well. And you may already own them or you like picked up a Baron because like it got a reprint and it's really cheap. So why not have a Baron on hand? So I still think this deck is cheap and uh, it's really good. Now, I'm not certain what's going to happen on the ban list, but that's not what we're talking about. So for the time being, this deck is going to do a lot for you, I feel like. It's like a deck that has a learning curve to it, but when you master it, I think you're going to be able to see a lot of results. It's not the most consistent deck, and obviously there's the RNG factor and all of that, but... Uh, I don't know. I still feel like it's strong and when it goes off, it does so much and you can really decide, depending on your budget and your preferences, which version you're going to be playing, what end boards you want to be ending on and there's so much flexibility with this deck. So I personally really, really like um, tier as an option. So, okay, moving on, um, I wanted to talk about Manadio. Now, this is a little, it's like on the verge of being budget. And let's talk about the money cards. Or actually, first, let's talk about why the deck is good. I still think it's a really strong combo deck, even though what the deck is lacking is follow up and grind. And that's not great. Usually, you would want your deck to be able to grind, to have a lot of follow up and resources, even if your board gets broken or if you get stopped. But what this deck does is it goes through a lot of its cards to get to the end board. However, if it doesn't get interrupted or it gets interrupted with a um, not so impactful card and if your opponent just doesn't have a board breaker, you will usually win if you want the die rolls. So it's high risk, high, re high reward, but I do think the deck has um, a good future ahead of it. I don't think it's going to be hit. And if some other decks get hit, I feel like this deck is really going to shine. So 
Let's talk about Caladium. The price trend is about 19 euros, and this is the lowest that this um, field spell has actually been if you look at the chart. So yeah, Caladium is around 20, let's say, and then you have Astral Out, which is around 13, and you will usually need two copies. And also Rium Heart is around five euros or something like that. So you would get to about 90 euros for the core, because, you know, there's like Scare Claw stuff and the rest that you have to pick up, but most of that got reprints and um, stuff like Amritara. I think Amritara is actually really cheap. Let's let's find Amritara. It's literally like two euros. Yes, it is not expensive. But then the rest of the things in the extra deck are what gets you to almost 150 because you need to play D Spotted Crimson Dragon, Exosynchro Snowdrush Dragon, and all of these cards are like needed, but you might already own them. Now, Crimson Dragon has just been 15 for <laughs> the longest time, and Mr. D Spotted is around 26. Like this, this card was cheap. It was around 10 or something like that. Maybe a little more when it came out, but we all knew it was going to be really good. So you maybe picked it up if you kind of saw ahead. And um, and also, yeah, Exosynchro is around 26, 25, 26, but it's been around 30 um, ever since its release went up. And now it's kind of it's, it's kind of dropped down and steadied. So, yeah, you can just add those staples slowly you do not need to pick everything up at the same time if you don't want to but uh, yeah you know there's a lot of potential in this deck and speaking of combo decks the last deck on today's list is going to be infernoble now yes infernoble plays in full spoils don't come at me but i do have a deck list for you up on the screen that does not use info spoils and if you look at infernoble by itself number one the core is cheap it's been cheap for quite a while now. And number two, it is so strong. Again, what Sinful Spoils does is it adds consistency. And if you justify having Sinful Spoils, sure, you can include it in Infernoble as well. But if you don't want to, and if you just want to play a combo deck where, for the most part, if you win the die roll, you're probably winning. It's really tough to actually disrupt this deck. And um, Connector is just not a real card. And <laughs> it just does so much. So um, in my opinion, you can still do well with just regular Infernoble, especially now where you have so many combos and new pieces of support and not everyone is going to be as familiar with the deck and the, the core is cheap. There is Heritage of the Chalice, however, which is like, I had it pulled up, but I, I think I closed it. It's around 14 to 15 euros, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. It's around, yeah, 14 to 15, so I was correct. This is the most expensive card that you're going to have to spend the money for because it's good and it works together with your deck and you need it. But other than that, everything got reprint. You literally have like common printings of cards and um, the support is not expensive either. The link is like a couple euros, which you play two copies of usually. So I think it's two copies. So yeah, you know, the deck is not expensive and it does have a lot of potential, which you can also build on top of if you decide to invest into Sinful Spoils. And again, most of these decks do play SP. If you feel like spending the money, if you justify it, cool, play SP. And if you don't feel like doing it, you do not have to, to just have fun at locals. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know what you think makes a deck budget. Is it like, the total amount of money spent, like 50 euros, 100 euros. Is it only the core? Does the extra deck count as well? Or like extra cards? Let me know your thoughts. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments. Like the video, ding the bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.